Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reader from the biblicalnutritionist.com. And today it's all about all of the blood work, all of the labs that you need to have checked. I want you in charge of your health. I don't want you to be caught by surprise with a diagnosis. And you said, where does that come from? No more of that. No more surprises. I want you in charge of your health because I'm here to help you finish this race well. And I'm here as your personal biblical nutritionist. I'm here as helping you, serving you God's recipe for excellent health. And I want you to be strong. I want you to be vibrant. I want you to have the longevity because God has brought you here for a purpose. And so today I'm so excited. We get to talk to Dr. Jay Hitson. You've already met her before on the other videos. Okay, no, wait a minute. That's only for those of you who are part of the Biblical Nutritionist family. You have to hit like, subscribe, and the bell to be part of the family. So please do that before we get further into this video, because I do want to welcome you into the family. You can always check out our website for more information. We'll talk about more about that at the end and also our academy. We'll talk about that at the end too. But right now, let's get into all of the labs you need checked. Welcome, Dr. J. It is so good to have you back with us. Oh, thank you for having me again. All right, let's just get us started. Just just shoot for it. Just tell us what are the labs that we have to have checked now? And some of these mm -hmm. your doctor may not be either reviewing with you or ordering. So let us know. Absolutely. So I'm, it, this is a not in any particular order. It's just more so of here we go. So one of the top th conditions out there is type two diabetes. And if you, you type two diabetes is starting to emerge, even when you, it used to be mostly a genetic. So if it ran in your family, that kind of thing, well, that's changing now. Um, so you need to know where you stand because type two diabetes is one of the easiest conditions, one of the easiest major diseases to reverse if you catch it early and if you stay on top of it. So just getting those A1Cs, getting those glucoses uh, checked because also, you know, having done hundreds upon thousands of labs, the number of people who just don't handle sugar well, it's, it's a surprisingly high number. So again, it's just good to know where you're at in that category. The next one down is your kidneys. Now, kidneys go really mm, untalked about a lot in, in a lot of healthcare because there's actually not a lot of medical treatment protocols for kidneys. So pretty much, well, they just kind of wait till your kidneys get to the point where you need dialysis. But there's so much so much that can be done with somebody who has, you know, early onset kidney disease to reverse that process. Um, and, you know, that's one of the things that's been so amazing is working with people and seeing even within 90 days, we can start to see, you know, some of these early stages of kidney disease going back well into healthy ranges again. Again, easier if you catch it early, but you'd be amazed at what can be done at any stage and how you can start to turn that back. So again, taking charge of your health though, because your doctor may just not mention it because they don't have a drug for it. So, and they typically like to just kind of move past things that they don't have a, a pill for. One of the next ones, this is so simple, hydration. And again, I, Annette, I know you talk about hydration and how important it is to be hydrated. I think a lot of people just don't know if they are or are not getting enough water. I mean, it's, I know it seems so simple, but there's so many symptoms. You can really feel terrible if you're not hydrated properly exactly. and it's a, you know, how good you can just feel. And so just know, okay, are you doing a good job or are you not doing a good job? Can I also just say one other thing that there's so many people who they're drinking their water, you know, they're doing what you tell them to do, but they feel they're like, I think I'm just running to the bathroom all day long. Okay. Are you holding on to your hydration? It's, you know, we really only know that from the blood work. So making sure that yes, you're one, you're hydrated, but two, you're actually, whole, you're doing the job, but is it your body taking it in? So, so what tests would those be specifically? 
for the kidneys? That, you know what? That's a good question. Because, well, the kidneys, especially, we like to look at creatinine. We like to look at the BUN creatinine ratio and definitely GFR. You know, that's that really tells us GFR, glomerular filtration, right? Try to say that one five times fast, glomerular filtration. <laughs> Now, with regards to dehydration, it's a mix of numbers. So that's why also a lot of your doctors aren't going to bring it up because it's like, it's like if and um, a little bit. So sometimes it's your sodium potassium being off. Sometimes it's your chloride being a little bit off. Sometimes we see it because of the way the magnesium correlates to the calcium. There's so many different ways that you have to kind of measure to figure out, is this dehydration or is it an infection? Or is it a pH imbalance? And that's where you, it takes some experience to be able to discern the way the numbers work and then which which what is actually wrong here and how do you take action? One of the next ones that definitely does not get addressed are the digestion factors. So whenever we're looking at that, it's usually like we look at your, your total proteins because most digestion issues do really respond to better proteins. Um, it just as a very baseline. I'm not, not everybody, but you'd be shocked how many. So we look at your total protein, your albumin, your globulin, and your AG ratio. That gives us a really great baseline for how well your digestive system is functioning. Now, here's what's cool is if you have a healthy digestion digestive system, you have the potential for being healthier all around because you, you're able to absorb the nutrients and the minerals that you're eating. If you don't have a healthy digestive system, you're more at risk for everything. Everything can be worse without, with or without a healthy digestive system. And this goes wildly undiagnosed, again, because these are just markers that usually get breezed through. And here's the other thing in that that has been really fascinating as I've been doing this for a long time, is that a lot of people are just borderline. It doesn't, it's not a red flag. It doesn't show up bold on your lab report. It's just right on the borderline. So if you don't recalibrate the numbers to look at healthy ranges, you can completely miss the digestive markers. Now, is that something most physicians are going to recognize or are they not going to compare all the numbers to give you a good um, answer? No, unfortunately with the digestion, the standard of care is to match your symptoms to a pill as right. opposed to look at your biochemistry and make recommendations that way. That's unfortunately the way the standard of care works. So do you have indigestion? Okay, well, we're gonna give you that pill. Do you have constipation? We're gonna give you that pill. It, they, instead of really relying on your biochemistry. And again, I can kind of, I don't fault them for that because the way the biochemistry runs, people just end up really borderline people with really like borderline numbers can have really severe symptoms. So I can get where they get a little bit confused, but right. once you really understand how the body works and you understand how nutrition works, you, you know, okay, we just need to change how you eat. Exactly. Getting into, of course, we, we always look at digestive enzymes and how well that one's going. It's not as much of a problem as I would have thought, uh, you know, years ago when I got into this, uh, but I love looking at people's like muscle bone, you know, what is happening? Did you know that your blood work can tell you if you're not exercising enough, your blood work can actually tell you if you're exercising too much. And that's important to know how is your body responding? You know, especially after the age of 40 women, we're losing our muscle mass at a rapid rate. You, you need to know, are you keeping up with that? Because it really affects your metabolism. It affects how you feel. So many people, whenever they're, um, they're coming to me because they have unexplained weight gain, this is one of the numbers I got to look at because one of the reasons why you're putting on weight is you're not, your muscle mass is deteriorating so rapidly. Your metabolism just, it's, it's shot. So you know, these are things that we need to understand that even though you're eating the same, you don't have the same burn uh, going on with your muscles. So that's something that we are able to test for in your blood. And which test would that be? So we look at uh, creatine kinase um, and especially with alkaline phosphatase. So alkaline phosphatase can tell us a lot of different things. Creatine kinase is really good about telling us how our muscles, what's, what's happening in regards to our muscles. It can tell us a lot of other things, but that's a, that's a, a good place to start for this, uh, for, the, for our purposes here. Now, the next da line down, again, I really like looking at your liver markers, um, ALT, uh, you know, ALT, AST, or, you know, there's, there's a few different, uh, you know, uh, 
letters that can all be associated with your liver. Livers also just kind of get breezed past a lot of times in standard annual panels and, and those kind of things because there's just not a lot of pharmaceutical intervention for livers. So until your liver gets really, really, really diseased, there's just not a lot that you know, the allopathic medicine has for liver. So that we have a tendency just to breeze past it. When the liver, when liver enzymes are elevated, and that's probably what a lot, if you, you've been told, oh, your enzymes are elevated, or we see some fatty, fatty liver, that's usually what you're told, and then just kind of move on past it. Here's the thing is the liver is one of the most rapidly healing organs in our body. So what we can, you can do so much to reverse any kind of early onset liver. And so just even knowing and getting it checked, I, you know, again, I've also dealt with a, a lot of wonderful people who have really changed their lives and, and reformed their lives from some, from bad habits in the past. And they just, you just need to know how did it affect you? How has it affected you? And, and what would we need to do to, to get it back and restored to the way you were meant to be? Next one, one of my next favorites, it's the lipid panel, but I look at it different. So yes, that's your cholesterol. And we all know about cholesterol. We, have a, we get into, and probably the single point of pressure that, especially the biblical nutritionist family gets, they're getting pressure about their cholesterol. All right. And, and, you know, should you be on a statin? Should you not be on a statin? And you really need to know your numbers really where are they at and what do they mean for you? Okay. Cause there's a big difference in, okay, your cholesterol is rising rapidly, or this is a baseline that's been a baseline for 10 years. See, all of our measures and our metrics for what's normal and healthy, there's always going to be exceptions. So there are going to be people who, you know what, it's totally healthy for them to have cholesterol above 200. So again, it's so important to know your baseline, where you're at. And furthermore, I like to run the coronary risk factor. It's from the National Institute of Health. It can, you know, you can look it up. Uh, it really gives just a very different perspective on how your bodies react to cholesterol and then to know, is it an issue for you? Is this is something that does need to be medicated or doesn't need to be medicated and being able to go there and, and feel more empowered when you're talking to your physician. Uh, the thyroid. So the thyroid has been given a really bad rap. Um, there was some, <laughs> the, the thyroid's had some really bad press and the thyroid gets blamed for a lot of things. You need to know how is your thyroid really functioning? So I'm going to tell you a little secret. So a lot of times when they're only, when they're running your thyroid numbers, they're running one number and it's called TSH, which is not, not even coming from your thyroid. It's a hormone from your brain. And that's all your doctor is using as a diagnosis for how well your thyroid's doing. It leaves a lot of information. You really need to know your T3, T4, um, especially T3. And that is going to, that's actually what is, how is your thyroid really doing? Not just the hormone from your brain, but how, what is actually happening and where are your levels at? Now, I also like to know uh, what's called TPO, which is a Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune condition that can attack your thyroid. So are we truly dealing with hypo, you know, underactive thyroid, or are we dealing with an autoimmune condition? It's very important because you don't treat those two the same and you need to be, they need to be addressed very differently. Just knowing that, knowing what's going on, is your thyroid really even the cause be behind your symptoms? Because we, you know, again, we, we, it gets blamed. I don't sleep well. I'm tired all the time. I'm, you know, I'm lethargic, you know, depression. A lot of that, while sometimes that is absolutely the issue, it, it is, it's not as much as a lot of people think. So knowing where you're at with that. I'm also a very, the one, if, if there was one test or set of tests that goes so it, it's all run on almost every annual panel, but just completely not mentioned. It's the, the, it's part of like, um, 
it's part of the overall panel where we go through and we te test a lot of the, you know, hematocrit, your hemoglobin, your, you know, your MCV, your, your MCH. I mean, there's just this whole realm of testing. They all get ordered in one bundle because that's the, that's the way the labs work. And these, for the most part, they just get glossed over and they tell so much more about anemias, but they aren't the iron anemias. They're like the B vitamin anemias. They tell us how you're absorbing. Are you really absorbing your nutrients? It's one of the best indicators for malnutrition. Now, I, again, percentage wise of people, a small percentage of people have show up with real thyroid. Just that's just the numbers. They not as many people have thyroid issues as they think they have thyroid issues. The number of people who have malabsorption is very high. I it I, there is barely a day that goes by that somebody doesn't test positive for significant malabsorption. Now that is real. And again, I know Annette, that's what you talk about. That's what that's what you do sure. all day long is work with people to get the good nutrients in, to make sure you're taking you're eating things that have something that's worth absorbing. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that, foods that, are, that foods that are good. Um, so you know, and that's what you just need to know, okay, is it working or do I need to take it up a notch? The next going down. Immune system. Yeah. The immune system has also gotten a lot of press pandemic, post pandemic with regards to, and, and again, depending on the time of year, if you're in cold and flu season, again, we, we kind of want to know where's your immune system sitting? How, how is it doing? So anytime you're definitely going into, um, and, you know, every time you're going into cold and flu season, it, it's a good idea just to know where, where you're sitting now, the immune system, I will say it, it changes rapidly. So tests can come back differently from one day to the next, but chronic conditions, like really strongly emerging, serious chronic conditions, they, they show up there. And it's, it's what's called the CBC Kim panel. They really do show up there. And it's a, it's a test. Those are tests that get run all the time. I, they probably get run just about every time um, you get a blood work done, but then knowing how to read it and knowing how to look at it and then knowing what to do nutritionally to address what's on there. That's, that's the, the key aspect. You're, you're, most of your doctors are just looking for a, a, an overwhelming pathology. And if it's not there, they're looking for an infection. And if it's not an infection, then they've lost interest where it can tell you a lot about what you need to be doing with food, diet, lifestyle. It, a lot of people don't know this too. In your CBC CAM panel, it does tell you an over over um, arching allergy marker. It doesn't tell you what you're allergic to, but it tells you if the symptoms you're having are associated with allergies. That's just fun to know, because sometimes we're having you know skin reactions, and people think that oh, it, I must be having an allergic reaction. But you can look at eosinophils and know for sure. Now again, then you can go down the allergy testing. Uh, mark to find out which ones, or just eliminate that from the potentials and move on to what's really causing some of the, the symptoms that you're having. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was just getting ready to ask you, what are the specific, what are the specific lab values that we're looking for on the CBC panel? And you just said it, it was eosinophils. Are there any other numbers or any other lab panels under the CBC that we're looking for that shows the immune system? So of course, you know, your neutrophils and your lymphs and your monocytes, I mean, they're all labeled there. It gets a little complicated when you're going back and forth between the granulocytes to the lymphocytes. Right. Uh, that's where I'll, I'll be honest, don't, don't even go to Google. You're just, gonna, <laughs> you're just going to freak yourself out. If you go to Google, uh, Dr. Google has a little too much information. You really need somebody who's used to looking at lab work to put it all together. Um, because I mean, when you look at, when you use the internet as your reference point, just about everything can be scary. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so yeah, but your immune system in general, and that's where we also color code things. So you can kind of see, okay, this is just borderline. That's fine versus, mm, okay, that's, that's really off the chart. So, um, your vitamin D super important. You got to know where your vitamin D is. The vitamin D and Annette, you talk about this and you do such a beautiful job of getting into vitamin D and, and your, your protocols and the, the vitamin D that you endorse, it works. 
I mean, it just works. And uh, I, I was telling somebody earlier, actually, literally uh, about an hour ago, uh, I was going through and I'm like, I, you know, you haven't started her vitamin D protocol. I can tell because you you haven't gotten, because it, it always has people in such great ranges. And it's just, that just doesn't always happen. But vitamin D is used for so many things. And it's kind of like hydration, where if you're not hydrated, you can have a, a multitude of symptoms. If you don't have enough vitamin D, you can have just this multitude of symptoms. And it's so easy to correct. One of the next ones, hormones. One of the most important things to know about your hormones is just where they're at. You just kind of need to get a baseline. Women and hormones, it's tricky. Um, they go up and they and down. They change throughout your lifetime. The values shift. But you need to know, basically, is this your problem or is it not your problem? That's the key. As I've gone through, while hormones are absolutely an issue for a lot of individuals, Here's something I want to just bring out and why we do the panel the way we do, where we test all systems, not just your hormones. We test everything because hormones are so susceptible to every other system. So sometimes instead of fixing your hormones directly or just, you know, going directly at them, sometimes if you address, let's say, uh, the, the malnutrition, you can actually impact hormone values. Sometimes when you address the sugar and the insulin, things that are going on, you can actually get the hormones to change. So one of the things, especially for those, you know, because I know cancer is a major topic and I know a lot of people are concerned about hormones and should I be on hormone therapy or, you know, you know, or, you know, breast cancers and estrogen based cancers run in my family. Should I stay away from hormones? And, you know, and here's the thing is maybe we don't even need to address those head on. Let's, let's address the other things that are contributing to that and see if your body doesn't self-correct. You'd be amazed how often it does. The last one is cortisol, which is your stress hormones. A lot of us feel stress and stress is very, very real. But here's the thing is, how is it affecting you physically? Sometimes you just need to know that. So there are times where our lives are getting out of hand and your stress levels, your, your cortisol levels can go up because you're, you're under a new stress. But then whenever that stress, it, it's just, it just doesn't go away. We start to go down actually. And we run into what people call burnout adrenal fatigue. And it's, it's, uh, while there's, um, there are definitely saliva tests for cortisol. And I know some, some physicians really like those. I found some incredible accuracy with blood cortisol levels and how, you know, and, and more consistency as to how those reflect what's really going on within our bodies. Again, you got to know, is the stress killing you? And if it is, how you, how are you going to take action? And, and again, how severe is this an issue for you? So all of these labs, they, they need to be checked and they need to be checked, not just as individual pieces, but in a collective, because if you get them done, you know, this one on this date, and then a month later, that one on that date, well, you don't get the correlation of how all of the systems are interacting with each other in the moment getting it all in one panel at one time in one snapshot can give you just such valuable information and tell you exactly what you can be doing for your health without all of the extra interventions of pharmaceuticals and, and procedures and, and really just help you be who you're created to be. I so agree with you. And that is so important for people to understand. And so you've given us a really good snapshot of what needs to be done and why it needs to be done. Many people, they go to the doctor, the doctor orders blood work and they're like, okay, well, he said it was all fine. But if they would just take that print out and just go through what we've just shared, they can kind of get an idea. Well, wait a minute, you know, those numbers are changing and, and that's good to do. Yet if they're saying, for those of you watching, you're like, Annette, that's just too much work. I don't know what I'm looking at. I agree with you. I understand. Uh, yet you can go to Dr. J and have the labs done through her and then you get 30 minutes of her time to go over it. And I can guarantee you, your doctor's not going to give you 30 minutes of time to go over your blood work. <laughs> so 
Uh, so just knowing that you're available for people and that you are there to sit down with them and to talk with them and just personally share with them what they're doing right, what they can improve on. And yet you give natural solutions. And so it's always going to come down to the fastest way to change your blood work in the positive is going to be eat real food. The second thing is going to be identify is my stress is, is it killing me? Or is this a healthy stress that I just can work through and, you know, get stronger in whatever I'm dealing with. And so stress really has to be addressed. And the quickest way to handle stress is start going back to God's word and say, Hey, what, what am I stressed about? Is that a, a truth of God's word or is that someone's bothering me and I can't stand that person anymore? Okay. Well, you take that back to the Lord. It's like, okay, Lord, I need your help dealing with this person. And then you'll just start, if you had this monitor on the outside of your, your brain, it was just start going down your stress levels. Like, oh, wow. Just by speaking to the Lord about it, my stress level went down. Exactly. That's how it works. I mean, there's more to it and there's a lot more I'd love to share with you. And that's why we have the inner circle. So I can coach people through that. So this is so good. You went through quite a few systems and the idea that it all should be done at the same time. So you see how they are correlated together, how one affects the other. That's important because we have a medical system that is isolated. You know, you go to this physician, you go to this physician, you've got hormones. So you go to the endocrinologist, you've got skin issues. You go to this doctor, you have urinary issues. You go to this doctor and it's so separated that no one's putting the whole piece together. And yet your lab values that you're recommending give us the complete picture. It's like a, a big, you know, 2000 piece jigsaw puzzle and you have all of the pieces in place. Whereas you go to your regular position is like, oh, but I'm, I can't find these corner pieces and I can't find these and I can't tell what the picture is. And so you give them the whole picture and that's what I love about it. And that's why I keep bringing you back to our family. So thank you, Dr. J, for joining us again for another great video, helping us to understand the value of blood values, uh, the value of labs that we need to get checked. And maybe your doctor is doing these and maybe he's not. And if he is, then applaud him, tell him, hey, thanks for doing this and thank him for spending time with you. But if he's not, then go to someone who will. And we'll put links down below. Dr. J's website is blue blueumbrellamedical.com. Check that out for yourself. It is just in the United States right now. We're hoping that she gets expanded to other countries, but for right now, it is a great resource. It's a great resource for you and for your family. So again, thank you, Dr. J for being a part of the biblical nutritionist family. Oh, thank you so much. It's been a blessing. Totally, totally for all of us. And for the rest of you, thank you for letting me share with you, the biblical nutritionist family, God's recipe for excellent health. It always includes the number one ingredient, and that is understanding how much God loves you. He loves you so much. He is the one true God. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Lord almighty. He is mighty to save. He, I mean, I could go on and on and on with all the different names, but he is the one true God. And that's what's most important because he is a living God and he loves you. And he desires to have a relationship with you. That's personal. And it's, it's where I want you to go next. Anyway, thanks for watching. And until next time, be sure and hit like, subscribe, and the bell. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, if you want to just learn more about the biblical diet or the biblical nutritionist teachings from scripture, go to biblicalnutritionacademy.com. Check out our courses there. You can learn at your own pace and just enjoy just, just meditating on everything that we have for you there. Until next time, thanks for watching.